Spray way at the yard trying to find a few parts to the OBS. Going and put it back together. I'm looking for a windshield wiper cow. Also, uh, let me see. This weather stripping that go right here. It's not on this truck here. But it's plenty out here, so I should be able to find what I'm needing. Just look around. OBS is everywhere. When I run across what I'm looking for, I cut you back on. Or I just walk through it. Let you see what's out here. Look like I found one that was already off. It just don't have the side pieces. I gotta find one with the side pieces. I think it's in pretty good shape. I believe I'm gonna fiberglass this part here, make it flat instead of having these little ridges here in it. It's cracked right there though, but it don't matter if I'm gonna fiberglass it. Yeah, right here too. But I'll look around some more. Maybe I can find a better one. I was just wanting to get this one since it was already off. Let me see, it's the weather stripping on this here, what I'm needing. Well, this here a blazer. Not a blazer, but a Tahoe. This one. A little bit longer than the one I'm needing. Got the passenger side off this one, but it had a driver side. This one here in good shape. Guess I'm gonna have to mix and match until I get all three pieces that's good. Pretty sure I'll be able to find one. All these OBSs out here.
found one on this 96 here. Looked like the whole piece some good, but I found one up top. They had the hood already off, so I think I'm going to get that middle piece. I'm just going to take this driver's side piece here. Yeah. I don't know. I might get this one here. Because the screw's coming off pretty easy, so it's not rusted out. I see. And just a few. Find one on this 89 here. It's in good shape. I just gotta take this windshield, wipe the hood off, and finish taking the screws off. Got my side pieces there. And the hood was off, so. Because you gotta take these screws here off and the hood being away. Got what I needed. It's a complete piece now. I found my last piece I was looking for. This weather strip in here. Let's go ahead and get it. Take it up here, see what they're gonna hit us for. They hit me for $20. That's all it was. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this piece here in the car. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Can't get it in the trunk. I'll put these here in the trunk. Now, I guess this here. I'm gonna have to ride with it on the inside. Alright, got the wiper cow here. Trying to come up with a game plan. How I wanna do it, because I'm trying to make this area here flat so I can paint it. Let me put these on. I'll show you. See, I'm gonna make this area flat and paint it. I could either do it two ways, I could shave these fans off and then fiberglass that area. But I'm thinking about just filling these fans up with the spray foam and fiberglass on top of them. That's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I don't have to worry about this area here because it's up under the hood. It might be I'm making. This fiberglass stick to this plastic is uh, sanding it. I got some Ada grit. I'm just gonna actually go around the top with this part here. I'm just gonna paint this part. I have fiberglass up to it and paint the rest of it. So I'm gonna start sanding it, getting it stuffed up and prepped up for, for the fiberglass. Been the shine and everything. Also took it outside and cleaned it up. Now I'm masking off the spots that I don't want no foam to get because I'm finna spray some foam in between these fans just to have me a solid surface to work with. A flat surface. Also I'm gonna build this up. That's why I put the tape here. And I'm gonna bring this all the way across. It's for the windshield wiper fluid to mask that off. I also mask this part here off so no foam won't stick to it because I want this here to be able to come back up. Just like back here. I'm just going to be using this foam gun here. I almost forgot about this here. Got to mask this part here off for the screws. So let me take care of that. 
and then I start farming it up. This is what the spray foam looked like after I got through spraying it. Then expand it. I think pretty much all of it and expand it. Now I just gotta let it dry up. Then I take some hater grit and sand it down into place how I like it. Now I remove the tape once I start sanding. I think I'm gonna just take it outside and let it go on the cure up. everything dry now now what I do I start trying to trim everything up before I start sanding I'm gonna take this knife here and just trim it up first and then I take some Ada grit and sand it down smooth I stored it over here get it but I'm just gonna go across it Like that there. Got it unmasked and finished shaping it up. Now I do the final touches with the DA. I got some 180 on it. I'm just gonna go across it and just trimming it up. Now I'm taking some sandpaper with my hand, just going around the edge, shaping it up. It's pretty simple. You gotta do this. Also, this and these end pieces. As you can see, I done finished shaping everything up. Put the end pieces on. Now, what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go back and put some masking tape on the areas that I don't want no resin. Just kind of keep it kind of clean because it'll be a lot less. I got to clean up and sand off at the end. So I'm just going to put some masking tape on this top edge and also on this bottom. Just to try to keep the resin off this part here. Also up in here. I done prepped it up. Put tape on everywhere that I don't want no resin. Prep is the key to anything. It might be time consuming, but it'll pay off in the long run as far as cleaning up all these areas. Because what that resin get, it'd be hard trying to clean it off. So I'd rather just do this than clean up at the end. I got my resin. I got some in the cup now. I just got to put some hard in it and mix it up. Like 
this should be good enough. Got an old stir stick. And I got a chip brush that I'm going to be brushing it on with. Just putting this on so I have a solid surface when I lay the fiberglass mat or cloth, whichever I use. I might use cloth, I'm not sure right now. I'm making my man once this dry. And that'll be in the morning because it's already late. I brought it on the inside so I can continue working. All right, let me finish up. Then I'll cut you back on. Guess once I finish up brushing it on. Now I'm taking some fiberglass cloth. I'm just cutting it into shape and just laying it on top of the wet resin. Then I go back and put some more resin on top of this fiberglass cloth. I should have cut it out before I started laying the resin, but I didn't. Fiberglass cloth laid. I done started putting resin on this part here. I just got to hit these and this end and that end. All right, we're gonna let this fiberglass cloth dry overnight. Then we'll sand this down. Anything we gotta touch up, we'll just use some fiberglass filler. I'm gonna have to shape this up right here because it's so thin I couldn't get no fiberglass cloth right there. We shape all that up with some fiberglass filler. Everything undried. Now I'm gonna take some fiberglass filler and fill in them little spots here, also here, and here. Then I also stuck some around the edges. And plus, I'll be removing this here for my screw holes, and I'll probably just use this sharpen. Cut it to size and just stick it in there. Then I have fiberglass just around that. What I did, I just cut some somewhat the size. It's not the exact size. And I uh, sanded it with 80 grit to rough it up so the fiberglass filler stick. Then I just stick it over the existing hole. Then I stuff it with fiberglass filler. Also, cut out the hole a little bit bigger. Got my screw opening set in place. You can see. You might see fiberglass filler on all of it because I mixed up some more. I was just trying to level everything off before I started shaping it up. This part down here, I'm going to have to bring it up more because it's kind of slanted. I'm going to wait till it dry completely, then I sand this part and put this end piece on. Then I know exactly how high it needs to be. 
I cut these off or sand them off one. All right, now you can see where I done built it up. I just masked this part here off so the fiberglass filler don't stick to it when I break it apart. It's kind of stuck now, but once I sand this top down smooth, I should be able to break it apart pretty easy. So I took this outside and sand it down, start smoothing it out. Also did this side. I brought that up a little bit more than what it's needed. But I sand it on down. Sanded it with the 60 on the DA. I finished shaping everything up by hand, like up in here. Then I take me a, I probably take the drummer and trim this boy here off, all the way down. And once I shape it up, I'ma still have some spots to fill, like here. I had cut down to the fiberglass, so. I'm gonna feel that. This also. I don't push these down. I gotta feel them. But I'm gonna shape it up by hand first. I just been trying to shape everything up. I actually haven't been sanding with my hand yet. I just been using different little tools to make the job a lot faster. Like I use this here, shaping this up in here, and. I had this fit in here on the die grinder. And I started shaping this up with this little sanding wheel. And I got these shaped up, somewhat shaped up, the end piece. Now, I'm gonna take this little, little saw here on the die grinder and I just run it across this top edge, trimming that fiberglass up away from the tape. Then I think I'd be good to go and start laying some just body filler down, smoothing it on out. See how I trimmed that? Also went back and used the little triangle sounder and knocked it down a little bit more. Now what I do, I just remove all the mask and tape that I put on there from the jump. Then I start putting some fill on it. Then it should start taking form after that. Removed all the mask and tape. I also took my box cutter and dug out some of these shallow areas. It was more like an air pocket. So I can put some fiberglass filler down up in those areas. Then I might as well just wipe the little low areas also. 
while I'm filling these. Once this fiberglass filler here dry, I sand it down and get ready for the regular body filler. Wipe the cow, sand it down, pretty much smooth. Now it's time to shape it on up. Now I'll be using this regular body filler. I'm just going to wipe a light scam coat over the top here. Light skim coat applied. I just got to dig out. Once I start sanding, I got to dig out my screw holes. But this one here should be fine. Once I sand, it'll fall through. I'm just going to use some 180 on the block. This little small block here. I'm just going to block the top of it. Then this bottom half, I just do it by hand. Here go the end pieces. I done sanded the top layer. I actually did it with the DA because it was a lot quicker. But now, I'm going to go ahead and start blocking, but I'm going to spray some guide coat on it first. I'm just going to lightly mist it on. And I'm going to be using that 180 that I started with at first before I had knocked it down with the DA. And this guide coat is going to help me find all my low areas and make sure it's flat. I'm just going to lightly mist it on. Got a coat dry. Now I will take my dura block with one eight on it and just start blocking it. Just gonna show my all my low areas. Wherever you see the guy coat still at, that's low. So I'm gonna have to bring it down a little bit more. Sanded it with the 180. Where you see that red at, I just put some one part glaze and put it to make that transition smooth from the fiberglass to the plastic. Let me show you my low spots. This is a low area here. This is that, that, that. Right here. The low there. Here, 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 and here. That was high right there. And I got a low spot also on this piece right here. So I'm going to mix up some two-part glaze and put it for that. This Evercoat. I mix some of that up and just lightly spread it on those areas. Let this glaze and put it here dry. Then we'll block it with 180 as well. Alright, we're wrapping it up now. Got that sanded. Now we got to hit these spots here, make sure we got that sanded good before we move on. And I'll be using this maroon scotch spray. I just tore me a piece. I'm just going to scuff that area up. So everything goes burn. Then I think that should be all for sanding right now. Now what we need to do, we need to get it set up so we can spray adhesion promote on this plastic. Plastic area here. But since the fiberglass is such a small area, I'm just going to spray the whole thing. Finish wiping everything down with the wax and grease remover. This is how I got it set up without have to move stuff around while I'm painting it. 
I just got a screw through that hole and it's just stand up there by the weight. I'm gonna spray my adhesion promoter. It's gonna be this PPG DPX 801. It's for plastics. I'm gonna be spraying this antenna base too. It's for the OBS. I'm gonna spray some adhesion promoter on that because I'm thinking about painting it black. promoter down that PPG adhesion promoter it's actually pink but it goes on once the dryer turns clear but you can tell on this black though but I forgot to tell you I took a toothpick and stuck it in that hole for the windshield wiper fluid so it won't get stopped up when I start painting it This the results of three coats of primer. Now I can see my pinholes and imperfections a lot better. See a pinhole there? It's not much. It's pretty smooth. You gotta fill up in here a little bit. And I seen some spots right here. Need filling. I don't know if the camera catching it. Little pinholes there. Those little minor imperfections I feel with this one part glazing putter. So I wipe that on all my imperfections, then I'm gonna spray some guide coat on it, then I'll block it again after that. Glazing putter applied. Now I spray my guide coat. I done ran out of flat black spray paint. So I'll be using just some primer. It's a different tint than this primer, so it'll work the same as guide coat. This should be good enough right there. The blocking has begun. I'm using a small block. This block here for 180 on this flat surface. And up in here, I'm just doing it by hand. Completely signed it, ready to shoot my final prime on it.
All right, it's narrowing down now. Then suck for him. Got one more step of sanding. That's the wet sanding. I'm going to spray a guide coat on it again. About to start wet sanding. I got some 400 grit. I already got some on my hard block here. It's the same as the other process of sanding. You want to remove the guide coat. This time it's gonna be a lot easier than the previous because it's already smooth. So it'll be much easier removing this guide coat. But it's still gonna have a few low spots like here and like that. But it'll come right up with a few more strokes. Wipe a cow, wipe down with wax and grease remover for the final time. Gonna mix up the base coat. It's gonna be a micro flake mix, custom mix in the base. Get ready to start spraying it. three coats of the micro flake base well it's actually probably full because I had to dust on some of the areas that I had cut through when I was wet sanding I do it every time knowing I should have sealed it but I didn't I want to take the shortcut when it come back and bites in the butt I should have learned by now but I continue to do it so don't make the same mistake I do if you cut through the primer go ahead and seal it now I'll go ahead and mix up my candy and shoot it.
to the candy. Think it's coming out good so far. If you can get past the candy, you're good. Because if you run clear, you can always wet sand it out. You run candy, ain't no turning back. You might well start over. coats are clear I still got a flow coat get the texture out once it dry it's pretty much dry to the touch but it ain't all the way dry it's just been about a couple hours after I got through spraying it I'm gonna let it sit out here a little bit longer then I wet sand it I done started on the wet sanding for the flow coat. I'm using some 400 on a soft block to do this flat area here. And I just use my hand around these spots here. But you can see the low areas, the orange peel and the grit. I still got to bring down. That's where the shiny paint still at. Like here. Finish wet sanding with the 400. I think I'm ready for the flow coat now. I want two tough trying to get up in here real good because it's going to be covered up by the hood. This area here. And these little side pieces here going over this. So I won't worry about that too tough. But I still sanded it. My main concern was up here. This the results after three coats to clear after the flow coat. I'm gonna let it sit out here and harden up about 24 hours before I handle it. And once it dry, I cut it back on and try to install it. Give you a look at it on the truck.
I'm at talking it's shit. It's gonna still be in there. <laughs> yeah. It just might be muted now. <laughs> <I'm just talking. laughs> it ain't over yet. Yeah. Nobody really gave a damn about us. We never stopped.